Let's now look at what you do when you're editing code with Xcode. This is the most basic thing that you normally do, and you've done it in other development environments, I'm sure. So I'm looking here at the editing area, and I have the navigation area shown. Typically, when I'm editing code, this is what my window looks like. I tend to show the utility area when I need it, then hide it when I don't. Do whatever you want, move anything around. You just can't change the location. You can change the size and whether or not something is shown. But this is what you've got, the editor area here, and usually something here like the navigation area. What I want to do is show you some of the basic techniques for editing code and what you've got built into Xcode. Notice that I'm using this demonstration that I created. It's a very simple template, and I'm using that to demonstrate how I will edit the code. I am deliberately not using a blank file. I could come along and create an absolutely blank file. And here's an empty file. I'll add it to the project. I'll call it empty test. And now I can select it here and start editing. I'll type in some code. What you'll notice is that I'm not getting a duplicate declaration here. I have not given Xcode nearly enough to go on to do its parsing as I type. So an empty file really doesn't give you much background for Xcode to do its work. We usually start from a template, and when we're creating a new file, you're creating the kind of file that you want to use, like a new class or a category. When you do that, there's enough syntax floating around for Xcode to really help you. So what I'm going to do is come along here and hold down the Control key, delete the file. And you'll notice that when I'm deleting a file, I can remove a reference to the file here and leave the file on disk. Or I can move it to the trash and delete the reference as well. And that's what I want to do here. I just don't want it around anymore. So now I've got part of the template. And you'll see if I come up here and start to declare variables, notice that I have color coding here. Int is now in blue. If I come in and type exactly what I did in that empty file, right away I have an error because I've given Xcode enough context for it to say, hey, this is a duplicate declaration. You can see it's a redefinition here, and you can see not only do I have the symbol that there is an error, but I also have the small little brown pointer to where the error probably is. Now, this is something that happens with parsers, scanners, compilers. If you make certain types of errors as you're typing, you can sometimes force the compiler or the parser to flag that error as the wrong error in the wrong place. Watch. I'll take out this closing bracket. And now the error is that I took out the closing bracket from view did load. What it has done is it's given me an error on the next line of code, which has nothing whatsoever wrong with it. And it's also given me an error down here. If I put that bracket back, you'll see the errors go away, except for the one up here that I used as a demonstration. So I'll just get rid of that code. So I got rid of the error that showed up in the wrong place because of missing a closing bracket. Similar to that is what happens if you have a string and you omit the closing quotation mark, or if you omit the opening quotation mark. That will generally force the parser to discover an error somewhere in a reasonably close area, although it may be the end of the file. When you get something that shows up as a result of missing closing or opening quotes or brackets, you'll see they're down here. And if you don't immediately see what the issue is, look further afield until you find something that shows up. Now, one of the things that you can do, let me put this opening bracket back in, and fairly soon the errors go away. Remember, we have the ability to fold up code. I can come here. That method is highlighted. I can fold it up, and you'll see that there's folded code here. I can unfold it, 
and the method is back. Now, let me take out this closing bracket, and I'm going to come up here and fold up the code. See, there's no closing bracket here. If I unfold it and put the closing bracket back, and now if I fold up the code, see, I've got the method header, the folded code, and I have end down here. If I take that opening bracket out again and attempt to fold up the code, you'll see the end is in the wrong place. So folding and unfolding not only save space and let you hone in on what you're typing, they also can help you find these rather pesky syntax errors.